done I've done Hangouts before, but uh, and live on air ones, but I've never actually hosted it before. So, hi, my name is Jr. Uh, tonight I'm with uh, Chris and with Carl, and uh, this is a little guerrilla tutorial on how to use Doctopus and how I've used it in my uh, teaching practice. So, say hi, Carl. Say hi, Chris. Howdy, hey, everybody. All right, very nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tweet the uh, URL, so just give me one second and send that out uh, by Twitter. Um, Dr. Puss, hang out. Hold on. Okay. Uh, I, hope, I hope this gets sent out. <laughs> correctly. So, all right. Uh, I just sent that out. All right. So let's go back to this. Uh, now, um, I guess some of you guys have used, or actually, has anyone used Octopus? Oh, Kathleen's here. Hi, Kathleen. Kathleen, can you hear me okay? I don't know. I, she doesn't seem to be moving. Um, she looks frozen. <laughs> yeah, she does look frozen. But um, So, Carl, you haven't used Octopus before. Chris, have you used it yet in your classroom? I haven't used it in my classroom. Well, just, you're not. I just tested it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let me uh, let me just break it down for you guys really quick. Um, the way it works. Uh, let me. You mind if I share my screen real quick? No. Nope. Right, let me go ahead and do this. Um, I'm gonna drive. script. So, just as a brief overview of what this is. Okay. Um, this is the slam session I did at San Diego. Can you guys see the presentation? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so Dr. Puss was put together by Andrew Stillman. That's his Twitter handle. Um, he's always looking for feedback from people, so if you actually are using it, um, it'd be great if uh, you guys can go ahead and give him some feedback on Twitter and also at UPD, I believe. That's the uh, website. So um, how does it work? Uh, so the way it works is I have a folder in my Google Drive. Okay, and then what I do is I set up in that folder a spreadsheet with all my students' first names, last names, and email addresses. Uh, obviously, they need to be Gmail addresses so they can edit the Google Docs. And the way it works is uh, within that folder, I'm going to share a template. Basically, it's a Google document. So the way I teach chemistry, so um, the template is the lab report. Okay, so it's just a blank lab report with some basic information. It may contain a table already or two, but um, it's got some information already in it. And what happens is Doctopus will go ahead and send out copies of that template directly to the students uh, and automates it. And the way it works is each copy that's made is customized uh, to that specific student. Um, so, for example, I can go ahead and change the naming or choose the naming conventions for each one of the documents. So, for example, I can name a lab just like this. Uh, and the way it works is I just go ahead and change those parameters or add those parameters as I'm creating the document, as I'm running the script. Okay? And the nice thing about that is each person has editing rights to that document. I give comments throughout the writing process. The person goes ahead and makes those corrections as they're writing. And there's no need to print or email the document to me because I actually own the document myself. Uh, and they just have editing rights to it. And then what happens is everything is also contained within that folder. So I can tell Doctopus to make sure that um, all those lab reports are saved within that folder. I can also set it uh, now. Doctopus actually in version number four uh, allows you to um, create a new folder actually in the process of setting up the script. And I can show you guys how that sort of works. And the nice thing is from there within the spreadsheet that's in that folder, I can embargo the editing process. Um, and then give grades and assign feed uh, assign grades and give feedback as well. And then that uh, the grades and the feedback are actually emailed directly to the students. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Again, um, I've used it all, but for one experiment in my uh, chemistry classes this year. For both levels, I have like a lower level chemistry course and a higher level chemistry course, uh, and it's worked out really well for me. Um, so I want you guys to kind of like start brainstorming as you guys are kind of seeing how it runs, like how to actually put it together. So um, let me go ahead and close the screen share. All right, so any questions so far? Kathleen, can you hear me okay? Uh, oh yeah, Chris, you can probably talk about Autocrab. We, we'll do like another Gorilla one um, eventually. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I've used Autocrab. I'm, I'm semi 
I'm comfortable with it, but yeah, the, the autocrat versus the octopus, I'd love to hear, you know, like I said, someone smarter than me make a comparison for what works when and what works. You know, yeah, um, I haven't even actually used uh, autocrat um, at all. Um, I, well, no, that's not true. I have used it before, um, but I was kind of like um, a participant in the process. So, um, But anyway, so let's go ahead and get this started. Kathleen, I don't know if you can hear me. If you nod your head, you can you hear me okay? Oh, well, in any case, she's going to go ahead and get the document anyway. So um, let me go ahead and run the script. So let me uh, show you guys what to do or how I do it. I'll share my screen again. So this is how I have it set up. Right now I have a folder. Okay. Um, where is it? Oh, so here's my folder. Can you guys see that all right? Yes. Okay, good. So right here is the live test document of this Hangout. I have this test spreadsheet and then the test document, which is the template. The test spreadsheet contains your email addresses, and I'll try to blur that out. Sorry, guys. Um, here, let me go ahead and... Oh, I don't mind. All right, good. So I'll kind of close it like that. So those are your email addresses right there, and then I've split you guys up into groups. So Carl, you're in group one along with Kathleen, and then if Ryan shows up, uh, he'll be in group two with Chris. So to load up Doctopus, you go to Tools and Script Gallery, and then find Doctopus. Yeah. And it's usually like the number one or number two in there, in the um, featured uh, scripts. Yeah, I'm going to guess the song. It takes a little bit of a... Uh, it takes a little bit of a second like to go ahead and install. So while that's installing, let me show you guys the document. So this is the document that's going to get sent out to you guys, and I want you guys to go ahead and answer those questions. Um, the test document's name just says test document, but what happens is that changes because the way we uh, like set the naming conventions for each document that gets sent to you. So now that it's installed, let's go ahead and run the script. So you'll notice now that there's an option here at the top that says Doctopus. So we click on that and launch installation. <clears throat> so, um, so this is step one. This is the sharing basics. I'm going to go ahead and set it up so then it's project groups. Uh, we kind of talked about this earlier, but you could set it so it's an individual with all the same document. You could set it to an individual with differentiated documents, and you can actually choose which documents that get sent out to each person. Or you could set it to a whole class. But well, let's do this first example for now. Um, note that I don't want everyone to access the documents. I only want people to that are have the documents shared with them to have access to it. Okay. Uh, I don't want others to be able to comment on it as well. Now, if you'd like for that to happen, you can go ahead and set that uh, right here. But at the moment, I'm just going to set it so that the group can access the documents, edit it, uh, but no one else can go ahead and uh, edit or view or comment those documents from any other groups in the class. So uh, each group member has edit privileges, So, because uh, that's what we want to do. Um, you guys can answer those questions together. And uh, as you can see, let's take a look at the roster settings. Um, the roster is the, in sheet one in that test Doctopus spreadsheet. The column that contains the email addresses is the email column. And the nice thing about what Doctopus does is it automatically finds emails in there and then we'll um, select that for you. So you don't have to go ahead and do that. So it kind of speeds up the process. Um, now, because I'm setting it as project groups, okay, I'm going to select the column that says group numbers, okay, to uh, that's how it's going to, Doctopus is going to find that group number and share those documents with that. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and move on to step two. Any questions so far with step one? You guys still there? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, okay, good. I, think, I think having it open would, uh, I mean, I, I like seeing it, and I would have questions the first time around. Got it. it. So let me go ahead and, um, so this is step two. So I'm going to find the document that I need to share. So it's that template. Um, here's the document that I want to share with you guys. Oh, wait, no, it's not that. I'm sorry. That's my lab that I just shared today. Here's the lab <laughs> test Doctopus Hangout. So here's that template, okay? And you have access to every single document that you own within that dropdown there? Exactly. So this is my entire list of folders. and so It's actually in all in folders. So it's best if you have it set in a folder. Um, it's easier to find. I, 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 now that I just thought about that, it actually it asks you to select the folder that contains the document template. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, you have to have it in a folder ahead of time. Uh, if it's not, then it's going to be a little bit troublesome for you to find. Does that make sense, Carl? 
Yep, totally. All right, cool. All right, let's go ahead and share these documents. So um, since I'm using a template, I'm sending out to both groups. I'm going to share the same document out with to you guys, and I'll click on Save Settings. Good question, actually. I've never actually thought about that. In, the document actually needs to be in the folder already. So, all right. Now, uh, this is step three. So what this does is I choose the destination folder. Um, I could just select that folder, the live test document, Doctopus Hangout, or what I can do is I can go ahead and create a new folder. So what I normally do is just create a new one. Um, I'll say these are the live uh, doc um, results. Okay. Um, and I'll go ahead and click on create folder name. Now note that you need to kind of select the folder or create a new folder in order for you to be able to save the settings. I ran into this trouble before. So, all right, so now that there's that folder, Live Doctopus results. Okay, so now here's the fun part. This allows you to go ahead and change the name of the document um, that gets created for each of the groups. So I'm gonna set it up with the group number first. And note that what happens is these are the titles of the columns that were in that um, spreadsheet, um, the spreadsheet that you see right here. Actually, let me go ahead and um, make sure that that's frozen. It, I don't think it's going to matter, but in any case, um, so again, so that's group, and then if I want to go ahead and assign the group number in the name of the document, what I do is I make sure I copy this, and this is important, you need to copy that and make sure it's pasted into there. So what that does is it finds the group number and it places it in that specific spot. So that it'll, uh, the title of the document will start out with your group number. Does it make sense? Um, and then I'm going to pick this um, data field right here, last name, and it'll just pick the first person in that, group's, uh, in that group and their last name. So in this case, it'll be Carl, and then uh, if Ryan's in the document, if uh, Ryan's not in the document, then I think Chris will be in there. Um, I'm not sure, but we'll just go ahead and set it like this anyway. Um, now, here's another tricky part right here. You can go ahead and click this and say notify document editors immediately upon resharing and sharing, or what you could do is just kind of uncheck this. Now, um, I ran into trouble with this in a couple of versions um, prior, like in version two and in version three, where I was getting notifications anytime someone would make uh, an edit to the document. So I didn't want to get uh, email bombed constantly, uh, being notified constantly about, uh, especially if I have like 180 students sort of um, uh, all sort of, you know, working on their documents at the same time. So I went ahead and unchecked this. I don't know if um, uh, Andrew Silman has actually fixed that, but I go ahead and uncheck this. I leave it unchecked because I don't want to get notified. And again, um, every single time that there's a change. So let's just go ahead and save the settings for step three. And then let's move on. So, uh, all right, so copy and share documents. So this is just a review. And then I'll go ahead and run the copy and share. So now just wait, and you'll see actually up here in the spreadsheet, four columns get created, a file key is set up, the link to the documents right here, uh, the last edited time, so it actually takes into account when the document was edited last, and then there's a grade and then a written feedback column. So it's going to run the script, so it takes a few seconds. Um, while that's running, does anyone have any questions so far? No questions, guys? No. Nope. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and click OK. So now what you'll see is each one of these links actually is uh, in this column right here is a hyperlink to that document. So as uh, now that this has been created, if you, could guys, if you guys could do me a favor, go ahead and go to your Google Drives, take a look at the share document folder, and you'll see that, um, that there should be a document that's named Group 1, Lindgren Striker, and then Group 2, Archer. So Chris, you'll be in Group 2. Uh, Carl, you'll be in Group 1. You guys see the document? Yep, okay. it's open. All right, so let me go ahead and open Carl's, or Group 1's, I guess. And as you can see, the document's name is now uh, Group 1, Lindgren. Uh, there are two viewers. Okay, Kathleen's actually in there now too. So hi, Kathleen. Good to, for you to join us. So go ahead and do me a favor, and, and you can kind of see. You can go ahead and edit the, those documents, right, now, or answer those questions. Let me go ahead and open up Chris's just to show you guys exactly what it looks like. So here's Chris's. 
Chris went ahead and started editing, so I can see that Chris is in there. Uh, oh, right, is Ryan in here? Nice, Ryan. You made it. <laughs> All right, good. So you guys are going like um, uh, editing the document. I forgot. I should have put names and then emails and Twitter handles. So, uh, and the nice thing is, as you guys are editing the document, what I can see is uh, I can make comments directly into there. So right here, I can place a comment. Uh, double this up. That way you guys can see that there's two of you on the document, so make sure to double that up. Um, as you guys are editing, I can see on revision history okay, what you guys are editing and so forth. Okay, So for example, if I want to revert to this uh, original document, I could, but I don't want to do that since you guys are spending some good amount of time editing the document. So there you go. So this is what the document would look like on the student end. Okay, and this is what it is, um, uh, what you guys kind of need to complete. So this is what my students sort of see. All right, good. Any questions so far, guys? Nope. Awesome. Um, all right. So now what we can do is, while they're completing that, let me show you what other options show up on the Doctopus drop-down menu. So I can refresh the last time of edit. Notice that there's four new sort of links right here. I can attach a Gubrick, okay? And this is something that um, Stillman and um, all those Googlers had actually just, I think we're working on. I haven't actually used Gubrick yet. Um, I plan to use it uh, eventually in the next assignment. I just haven't had the time to sort of invest in um, using the Gubrick. Um, I think it's awesome. Uh, I just... Uh, I need some time to invest in it. So, um, And then these are the things that I want to show you guys. Is embargo the grading process, and then send personalized emails to students, know, letting them know what the grade is and what the written feedback is. And that's the written feedback that you see right here on these columns. So, cool. Um, all right, so that should be enough time. Um, let's see. What country has the longest coastline in the world? It's Canada. Oh! <laughs> So the largest animal on the planet is the blue whale. You guys know that, though. Um, let's see if group two is doing any better. There you go. Silek is awesome because he... <laughs> I hope he doesn't see this. He's probably watching it right now. <laughs> um, so, um, all right. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to embargo the editing process. So Doctopus, embargo grading. I'm going to run that script. I'm writing the script. Notice we'll strip all the editing privileges from student authors and remove the comments and editors from the assignment. So once this is done, actually, I can go ahead and unembargo the process. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. So now it's locked for grading. Okay. Although, if you guys are still editing the document, you may have to refresh it. I'm not sure. So if we refresh, okay, and refresh. And I actually should have shown you guys this originally, but if I look at this, okay, if you look at the sharing, uh, you can kind of see that, um, oh, wait, hold on a second. Let me see if it's actually done. Oh, I don't know why Carl can still edit the document, but let me take a look over here. Okay, so as you can see with the um, group number two, uh, notice that I'm the owner, and uh, you guys can't actually even see the document. Well, I think you guys can see the document uh, from the list, but if I... Let's see, how do I do this? Um, to view... Well, let's take a look at the spreadsheet again. Let me see if... That's uh, JR. Yeah. Yeah, just a, just a quick note. I was, I was in the document, and then uh, when you embargoed it, mm -hmm. it said, a, a window came up and said, you no longer have... Uh, privileges to edit this document, which is cool. You still there? You're sorry about that. Um, yeah, well, that's good. I'm happy that it actually notified you. So let me go ahead and show you guys um, if you want to unembargo this. So let me go ahead and run the script again. It'll open it back up to editing. And this is nice because, um, you know, if there's a lab makeup, um, I can have my students sort of, or I can unembargo the document and then go ahead and uh, share it with them again so they can go ahead and edit those documents and so forth. So let me go ahead and go back to it. Let's say everybody gets A's. So I'm going to go ahead and put A, A. 
up at written feedback. All right, there we go. Uh, and then let's say I want to go ahead and email the grades out. So I'm going to go ahead and send the personalized emails out, run the script. Um, and then, so let me show you guys what happens. So, again, these are some of the data um, fields that I can go ahead and put into the um, email subject and the recipient email address right here. So, um, I obviously want just the email in the email address recipient right here. Um, email subject would be feedback on this specific document right here. Or what I could do is, you know, just name feedback on um, lab report or whatever it is. Uh, dear student, I've recently shared with you the new assignment link below, which found in the shared documents. So, um, let's see. Go ahead. Hold on. What is? Uh, recently shared a new assignment with you. Actually, hold on. Let me see. Send personalized emails. Embargo for grading. Oh, I actually need to go ahead and embargo this for grading so I can send the grades out. Let me try that. That's new. I didn't realize that. I need to make sure that it was embargoed in order for me to send the grades out. Is that what it is? Feedback on something. Oh, actually, no. I need to go ahead and um, type this in. So, dear student, let me go ahead and edit the uh, letter. So, um, your grade for the assignment is... And then notice that what I'll do is I'll always make sure that I copy this uh, data field right here and I'll paste it in here. Um, only because I've made the mistake before of um, not typing the uh, data, uh, just the um, this information uh, correctly into the email or into the email subject and so forth. So um, I've had issues with that before. So uh, it, it'll just say, my students will say, oh, I just got the dollar sign again. So. Um, you go ahead and just complete that, and then your teacher. So I'll go ahead and save and send the emails. Oh, and then I want to show you the written feedback. Here is your feedback. And then let me go ahead and copy this, and then send it over here. Copy and paste right there, and then I'll go ahead and send the email. And then Doctopus will go ahead and run the script, and then send it out. And you should have received an email from me. All right. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So, um, hey, Ryan, can you hear me okay? Oh, you're on a mute? Yes, I'm, I'm muted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, I saw that you were in the document, so you're able to see it. Um, where, did you guys get the emails? Did you just check it right now to see? And did the emails look just fine? Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So that's how I use it. Um, I've uh, just on this last assignment, I sent out individual lab reports. Um, I wanted them to actually spend the time to go ahead and I gave them a week. So I gave the lab report to them on Monday. It's a virtual lab that comes along with our textbook. So I just sent them the hyperlink to this um, uh, flash uh, file that they can uh, go ahead and sort of navigate through and. Um, and then type up their uh, their own lab report. So I kind of gave them a little bit of freedom, a little bit more freedom, uh, but with you know obviously with a certain set of parameters. Like you need to have a data set, uh, you need to have observations, uh, you need to um, write you know the chemical equations correctly and so forth with the correct subscripts and superscripts and all that stuff. So um, so that's that. Um, I've only ever used it in individual lab reports and in group lab reports. I haven't done whole class discussions and whole class documents yet. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, so I hope that that was helpful. Um, and if you guys, thanks for participating tonight. Um, thanks for teaching. Yeah, so I hope that you guys, like, you know, kind of just play around with it. There are, um, you know, you may run some bumps, into some bumps like here and there, but um, just let Andrew know. Um, he's really good about getting back to you if you happen to have a concern or like a feature that you'd like to add. So. Um, you can find him on UPD or uh, it's A Stillman is his Twitter handle. Um, I, I try not to, you know, bomb him with tweets and everything, but and he's going to hate me now. But, um, but again, like I said, he's super nice and uh, totally helpful. Um, anytime that I've asked him a question or 
showcase it for him, like, you know, kind of like what I'm doing. He's like, oh, that's great, you know, try Gubrick, try G-class folders and so forth. Um, eventually, I'm going to need to uh, kind of figure all that stuff out, um, and I'm going to allow myself, like, a couple hours during spring break to work on Gubrick and G-class folders to, um, to, <laughs> to improve my uh, document management in my classroom. So um, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, thanks for making it, uh, Kathleen and, uh, and Ryan. Uh, so anything else you guys want to say before we end the broadcast? No, so, thanks. Up. All right. Well, have a good night, guys. I hope that was uh, helpful. We'll see you guys you, soon. Can you end the broadcast but not kill the hangout? Yeah, let me end the broadcast.